Hi, I'm Izzy. I'm 16 years old and working on reducing maternal mortality by distributing life-saving maternal medication. Hi, I'm Eileen. I'm 16 years old and together with my team, we're creating a resource to solve plastic pollution. My name is Peter. I'm 18 years old. I'm working with a lot of my friends to help mitigate the effects of drought and climate change on global food production. My name's Anupra, and my team and I are trying to prevent food waste in developing countries. I'm Cameron. I'm 16, and my team is using commensals to finally eradicate rapidly mutating RNA viruses. I'm Devanshi. I'm 15 years old, and my team and I are currently trying to solve the reproducibility crisis. Hi everybody, my name is Michael, I'm 18 years old. My team and I have been using machine learning and computational biophysics tools in order to create new therapeutic candidates for COVID-19. Hi, my name is Shagan, I'm 17 years old, and my team and I are using artificial intelligence to accelerate the testing of aging and supercapacitor cells. My team is working on the plastic pollution problem. So far, humankind has generated over 6.3 billion tons of plastic waste. And yet, despite efforts from organizations to try and reduce this number, it is expected to increase to over 26 billion tons by the year 2050. We identified that many organizations aren't actually taking the right approach to tackle the root cause of this problem. And so we created our own online resource to identify some of the problems and areas of opportunities in existing solutions. Our online resource acts as a guidebook to NGOs to show them some of the best next steps to take if they want to actually make a dent in the plastic pollution problem. RNA viruses like HIV and influenza cause millions of deaths, yet efficient vaccines have yet to be made. And my team is using commensals to eradicate rapidly mutating RNA viruses. Through creating our solution, we've learned new frameworks to allow us to better approach and create new solutions for biologically based problems. Science greatly depends on reproduced research to make sure that all their data and information is still valid and accurate because things do change over time. However, a lot of scientists are currently not motivated to reproduce research because they don't have enough funding or enough incentives to continue to do so. So that is the root cause that my team and I are trying to get at by creating this platform. Not only will they get mentorship, but they'll also get recognition for reproducing research, both the scientist and the mentor. We're also trying to create a space where they can find, share research with other colleagues or other scientists around the world and create a community where we understand that reproducing research is important. So in India, about 80% of the water is used for watering crops, 35% of which is actually effective in watering the crops. And the biggest problem to that is because mostly water comes down all at once during the monsoon seasons. The water gets super saturated and all the water comes down as runoff without actually watering the crops. And so what we're trying to do is to use hydrogels or super absorbent materials within a soil to basically absorb all that water and slowly release it during times of dry seasons and hopes to improve the sustainability of crop production uh, and improve the, uh, the livelihood of the farmers in India. My team and I want to end food waste. One third of all the food we produce is wasted, largely because farmers in developing countries lack the capital for proper storage. We're focused in rural China to distribute cheaper, more protective grain storage bags. Maternal mortality affects over 300,000 women per year. But the crazy thing is, 90 to 99% of these deaths could be totally prevented. We're specifically working on postpartum hemorrhaging, which causes about a third of all maternal deaths. We're distributing a drug called misoprostol, which can reduce the risk of getting postpartum hemorrhaging by 66 to 85% of women who would have otherwise got it. It costs less than a dollar, it's FDA cleared. We're bringing it to rural areas within Nigeria and hopefully across Sub-Saharan Africa. What we've ultimately learned is that there are solutions to existing problems, but they're just not in the right places. My team and I are working on the food waste problem. 1.6 million tons of food is wasted yearly, which amounts to $750 billion. We're mainly focusing on the producer side of the supply chain in the developed world. 
Right now, farmers will waste about 20% of food that they produce, but due to COVID-19, this will increase to 80%. Our solution is to create a platform for farmers to increase their marketability and agility. We'll be doing this by connecting them with other farmers and distribution plants as well as consumers. 10 to 12 years, a 12% success rate, and over a billion dollars in cost. This is our current process when it comes to creating new drugs, and it is not holding up against the fight for COVID-19. Computational tools like machine learning are allowing us to shorten this time by over one to two years, as well as save $100 million while we're at it. And these are the kind of tools that my team leveraged to create new molecular leads in order to test against the current coronavirus when infected in a cell. We're currently working with partners at Stanford University as well as the University of Toronto in order to create this idea and potentially get it tested in cells infected with the coronavirus in order to see how efficable they are in preventing this infection. My team and I are working to address a key problem in the supercapacitor industry. And this problem is the time it takes to test for aging and lifetime in supercapacitor cells. Currently, it takes between three months to even two years to test for aging and lifetime in a supercapacitor cell. Our team is working on reducing this time by 96% while still maintaining the same accuracy in predicting the end of life and the lifetime for these cells. How we're doing this is applying our knowledge of machine learning to actually predict the outcome and reduce the time it takes from three months to four days. We're super excited to work on this problem and currently we're in talks with large supercapacitor companies in hopes to make this dream and this idea a reality.